Hello and welcome back. Uh, here's an exercise looking at uh, discrete probability distributions uh, and also calculating their expected value and variance. So this this might turn out to be a bit of a longer video. We've got a few different things that we're, we're looking at here, so feel free to fast forward uh, if you want to skip through it uh, and just look at certain parts of it. So let's get into it. We're looking at uh, completing a doctoral degree. Workload aside, the time commitment is significant, uh, but not everybody takes the same amount of time. So we look at a random survey of a group of 50 PhD holders uh, and obtain the following information on the number of years taken to complete their degree. So what we have then is our number of students. So this adds up, this is our 50 students. And I can see, well, I had of those 50 students, four of them took two years, seven of them took three years, 15 of them took four years, uh, and so on. So the first thing that we need to calculate is the relative frequency. Uh, so the frequency uh, of uh, observations for each of these individual values for here are discrete, uh, are discrete variable. So in order to calculate these, it's fairly straightforward. We just need to look at for the number of students who took two years to complete uh, their doctoral. That would be four divided by total of 50. So that's 0.08. Okay, so we have we can interpret that as being, you know, if we randomly selected uh, some individual with a PhD, you know, there's a probability of 0.08, or let's say an 8% chance that that randomly selected uh, PhD holder uh, took uh, two years to complete their their PhD. If we continue on, we go to the next. So. Uh, for those who took three years, that was seven out of 50. So that's 14. So again, randomly select somebody with a PhD, 14% chance that they took three years uh, to complete. So let's go through the rest of these. We have 15 out of 50 uh, took four years. So there's 0 0.3, uh, 14 out of the 50 took five years, so there's 0.28, and finally 10 out of the 50 uh, took six years, so that's 0.20. And then we have nobody took less than two years and nobody took more than seven years, uh, so this all adds up to one, meaning that if we randomly select somebody, uh, a PhD holder, we can say, well, with 100% certainty, they took between two and six years, uh, inclusive of two and six years. So there we have our, uh, our probability distribution in tabular form. So here we're just developing this, this part of the problem. And uh, part A is asking us, what uh, show that it satisfies the conditions for a discrete probability. Well, here we have that all of those frequencies are non-negative. I don't have anything here that is less than zero. So we meet that first criteria. And if we add all of these together, uh, add all of those up, they will be equal to one. Again, that means that it's, it's exhaustive. We randomly sample one PhD holder and they will fall between uh, two and six years uh, have to have completed their PhD. So all of those conditions are met, uh, so we're fine. Moving on then to part B. What is the probability of completing a PhD in four years or less? So if we were to randomly select somebody uh, with a PhD, what's the probability that that individual PhD holder uh, finish their degree in four years or less? So for this, all we need to do then is add up so the frequency, or you can think of this as, of course, a probability, uh, four years or less. So that's the probability associated with four years, three years, two years, and, oops, and one year. So if we added up all of those probabilities, here we can just look at them in our table. I'm going to be adding up, oh, I don't have a one a silly mistake. So four, three, two, or one. 
And so this is just simply going to be, well, there's a 30% chance they did it in four years, plus the 14% chance they did it in two years, plus the 8% uh, chance that it was done in uh, two years. So if we add all of that up, let me get my calculator. <coughs> oh, where am I? So 0 0.3 plus 0.14 plus 0 0.08. So 0 0.52, 0 0.52. So we can say there's uh, a little bit more than half, you know, 52% chance that a randomly selected PhD holder uh, completed their PhD in four years or less. So if we move on to part C, what's the probability of completing it in four years or more? So now we're looking at these probabilities here. Let's do these calculations uh, up here. I'm running out of space. So this is going to be, uh, so let's say the probabilities are four years plus. This is the frequency of four years plus five years plus six years. And so that's equal to, uh, where are we, 0.3 plus 0.28 plus point, oops, plus 0.2. And so that's going to be, let's find our calculator, 0.3 plus 0.28 plus 0.2, 78.78. .78. So, 78% uh, chance that a randomly drawn PhD holder finished their degree in four years or more. Good. So that's uh, part B and C done. Part D, what's the expected value for the number of years? So what's the average number of years uh, that it would have taken to complete uh, a PhD? So here, I'm just going to clean, clean up some space <coughs> so we can calculate our expected value. So for this, let's go here. I need to calculate uh, these weighted values. So I look at the value for that, that variable, multiply it by the frequency associated with that, and then we're going to add all of those together, and we'll get our, our expected value down here. Uh, the formula that we're going to use here is that expected value of x uh, is the summation of all of these. So the, the values for the variable multiplied by uh, the relevant frequency. So what I'm going to do now in this column is I'm going to multiply the number of years by this frequency and we're going to do that uh, for all values going down. So for the first one this is going to be, let's get this out of the way, so 0 0.08 times 2, so 0 0.16. The next one, 0 0.14 times 3, 0 0.42. Our next one, so we're at 4 years here, so that's 0 0.3 times 4, 1.2. This is the next word, five years, so 0 0.28 times five, 1.4. And finally, six years, 0 0.2 times six, 1.2. And now we just simply add those together to obtain our expected value, 0.16 plus 0.42 plus 1.2 plus 1.4 plus 1.2, and we have 4.38. So there's our 4.38. So on average, uh, it takes 4.38 years to complete uh, a PhD. Simple as that. Okay, moving on, part E, compute the variance of the number of years. Uh, we, we may as well also get the variance and the standard deviation because once we've got the variance, the standard deviation is easy enough to obtain. So the formula that we want for that, 
our variance. This is a little bit tedious. This is equal to the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. So this is our expected value of x. It's squared, and we multiply that by the relevant frequency. So we're going to put this together in pieces. So let's start off. We've already got the frequencies. The next thing we'll do, we have here, this is our expected value, or, or our mu, our average. The next thing that we want to do is calculate these differences between individual values of that discrete variable and the mean. Then we'll square those. Oops. So we're building up this piece here. Then we're going to multiply those squared differences, or those squared deviations. We'll multiply those um, by the relevant frequency. So then we have all of these pieces. Then the next thing is we're going to add all of those up. And down here will be our sigma squared. Okay, so there's a few steps and, and a number of intermediate calculations that we need to do here. So let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to be working uh, with this value for our discrete variable 2. And always for each of these calculations, I'm going to be subtracting off 4.38 because that is our mean. That's our expected value. So let's begin. The first one is going to be 2 Where's my calculator? The first is going to be 2 minus that expected value, 4.38. So this is negative 2.38. And then we go down, so that's for two years. Now for three years, 3 minus 4.38, 1.38. Uh, oh, these are negative values. That shouldn't matter because we're going to square it and they'll all become positive in the end anyways. Uh, next, I'm looking at 4 years. 4 minus 4.38, negative 0.38. Finally, 5 years minus 4.38, 0.62. And the next one is 6 minus 4.38 and 1.62. OK, so now we have all of those differences, uh, sometimes called deviations. They're individual deviations from the mean. So we're looking at the deviation between the value of, of the variable and that variable's mean. Now our next step, we're going to square. So here we're going to square all of those deviations. And so let's grab that calculator again. And let's get it out of the way. So I just need that column just to the right of my calculator. And this is 2.38. I'll make it negative just to be thorough and consistent. But really, we're squaring it, so it's a, it doesn't really matter. Uh, negative 2.38 squared, so 5.66. 566. The next one is 1.38 squared, so 1.9. Next is 0.38 squared, so 0.14. Next is 0.62 squared, so 0.38. And finally, 1.62 squared is 2.62. Good, so now we have those deviations squared. The next step is I'm going to be looking at these values, these deviations squared, and multiplying them back here by the relevant frequency. Okay, so it's those squared deviations times the frequency. So here I'm going to put this calculator right here because those are the only two columns that I need. So this is going to be 0 0.08 times 5.66. 
So 0.45. Oops. Uh, let's get that pen back. 0 0.45. The next one is 0.14 times 1.9. So 2. Point, uh, sorry, 0.27. Finally, 0.3 times 0.14, 0 0.04, okay, and next is 0.28 times 0.38, so 0.11, and last but not least, 0.2 times 2.62, 0.52. A little bit tedious, right? All of these problems and statistics, there's so many little tedious intermediate steps. It's so easy to make mistakes. It's, it's actually helpful sometimes, and I could have done it here, to, if you've got a highlighter or something, you know, when you're doing an exam or just doing your homework, it can be helpful to sort of you know, highlight maybe every other row, something like this. And then you can see, you know, then it helps keep all of the calculations lined up, all of the numbers lined up. Otherwise, it can be uh, real easy to make uh, silly mistakes if I accidentally, you know, use the wrong number in one of those intermediate calculations. So finally, our last step now uh, is just to add together all of these values. So I'm just going to add up that whole column starting at the top 0.45 plus 0.27 plus 0.04 plus 0.11 plus 0.52 and here I have my final answer 1.39. So there's my calculation of the variance if we want the standard deviation, well, it's just the square root of that variance. A little messy, let's round that to 1.18. Okay, so we have the average number of years to complete uh, PhD is 4.38 years with a variance sigma squared of 1.39 or standard deviation of 1.18. So again, we have information now on the average, so the location of this discrete uh, probability distribution and its standard deviation. So we have a little bit of information about the shape uh, of, that, of that distribution. So I hope this helps. This turned out to be a little bit uh, of a longer, a longer video, uh, but we've gone through a number of different steps and, and different types of problems uh, that, that you may be asked uh, when dealing with discrete probability distributions. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully it's not too, too long. Uh, as you can see, it does take some time. It is tedious. Uh, but uh, I hope that it's uh, made life a little bit easier for you. Thanks for watching.